Hello folks, yes it's Matthew Miller and yes on this podcast I'm going to be going through this, what this woman's going to be saying and man she is a good looking woman, she looks pretty nice and and she's a Hugo Slavian woman, issues a warning to all Americans, unfolding events are the product in a scripted pattern of the invoking hatred and violence to bring them down America. So it's all about bringing down America and probably other Western society, yeah, like New Zealand as well, yeah, because because we got those elites trying to push those communists on the onto those Western nations. And let's read through from what's on national news. Uh, Hugo Slavian woman has issued a powerful warning to all Americans. Evage deciding, uh, uh, well, sorry, people are not always there. And yet, deciding how all events you will see unfold in America right now. Uh, scripted emotional challenge events designed to turn citizens against each other. Yep, against each other. And of course, we got our Prime Minister Jacinda Ardern doing the same thing. She's trying to t- get us to turn against each other. And the media is also doing that as well. So, to invoke, uh, to invoke a deadly civil war that will bring down the nation. Out of chaos, the communists will stage a revolt and attempt to seize power, turning American into communist regime run by a genocidal lunatics who are willing to see tens of millions of people kill as long they can rise to power. See, people, this is. This is all about power. The Hugo Slavian woman saw the exact script played in her own country of Hugo Slavia. The hatred pushed by the media and the division of people, the turning of certain against each other by the shooting, violence and media hysteria and revolution. And, and all part of the George Soros script for, for mending a revolution to take down the nation and it's been carried out with a full considious of this treasonous mainstream media which is the enemy of the America this is why George Soros and corporate America are funding Black Lives Matter and because they need a Black Lives Matter to invoke a violent revolt, violent response from Trump or Patriots so the CNC can claim peaceful, peaceful protesters are being shot by Trump supporters. Shoot. See, people, they're trying to it's like they're trying to get people to turn against each other and shoot and and I'll say do not fall in the trap, hold your fire. Whoever shoots first loses practice trigger discipline which is something that the N F A C can't seem to master. Well let's see what this woman gotta say. Let's go to that. And yep, and let's see what she's got to say. This is my message for the greatest country in the world. In the light of the recent events in the United States, I felt morally obliged to shed light on a very similar chain of events that took place in my country during the 90s. The cause of those events was the same, a constantly re-emerging ultimate evil nihilistic, non-theistic religion slash cult that caused hundreds of millions of deaths in the 20th century and countless suffering. Wow. Now, proponents of that religion want to run the experiment once again 
And in that experiment, you, people of America, will be lab mice. Well, sorry, I had my mic off. Yes, that's what they're trying to do. Communist agenda. They're trying to push it, yes. The Prime Minister of New Zealand, Jacinda Ardern, is doing the exact same thing. Let's continue. Not so long ago, I was a lab mouse of dictators in my country. That country was Yugoslavia. Rather than giving you lessons about history of my country, I want to give you the timeline of the events which led to an extremely bloody war and dissolution of Yugoslavian Federacy. I will leave it to you to make conclusions about similarities with recent events in the United States. In the 1989, the fall of the Berlin Wall marked the victory of the free world over tyrannical monstrosity of communism across the Europe. However, Yugoslav communists didn't feel like letting go of their precious powers. Since the climate in Europe was extremely anti-communist at the time... Well, people, and yes, those communists are not going to be willing to let go of the power. And yes, we got our 2020 election in New Zealand, and boy, and yes, since we got Billy Dukaki saying to get some attention as well, but if she does, if that father does get into power, but unfortunately, I don't think our Prime Minister, Jacinda Ardern, is going to easily let go of her power. Because the thing is with commerce, they want to remain in power. They are power lovers. And especially she's still got her agenda to push as well. And, and man, she wouldn't want to let go of her power. So, let's continue. Time. They knew they needed a new strategy an ideology that would seduce the masses and keep the power in their hands. So they come up with a very clever idea, to rebrand the communism in Yugoslavia and to change its name into socialism. Not any type of socialism, but a very special type, the national socialism. Sounds familiar. The playbook they used to progress with their agenda was already tested in Nazi Germany. To establish national socialism, you must first install hatred in people. That's what the media is also trying to do. And yes, since the Christchurch terror event, we're starting to see some a lot of political correctness stuff in the New Zealand media. And all that waste baiting stuff, we're starting to see a lot of that in the New Zealand media. And boy, this is really can't get any more transparent though. <laughs> it's just. Well, let's just continue. In order to create genocidal levels of hatred, you must divide people of one country in well-defined groups. Hear that, people? Define, divide, polarization. To divide people into groups. Well, so let's just go back and watch it again. So with their agenda was already tested in Nazi Germany. To establish National Socialism, you must first install hatred in people. In order to create genocidal levels of hatred, you must divide people of one country in well-defined groups. In other words, you must create tribal or group think. This can be achieved in different ways. You can divide people by ethnicity, by race, by religion. You can let your imagination go wild. Yeah, and this is what is going to be happening in New Zealand. And people, let's just go back what well, yet, yeah, because since the Black Lives Matters in that March there, and man, 
which I'm about to get to that soon, so, and yet, by wasting that, and this is what this woman's exactly talking about, what's going to happen, so people, I hope you are paying attention. Since Yugoslavs were white and practically indistinguishable among themselves, the only card they could play was the religion card. Yugoslavia was very mixed religion-wise, and we had Orthodox Christian Serbs, Catholic Croats and Slovenes, and Muslim Bosnians. A perfect starting position. In the next phase, you must start making such social policies so terrible that will inevitably lead to the countless individual disadvantages. When the consequences of such government policies become obvious, you must start claiming that the cause of those inequalities is nothing but discrimination and hatred of one group towards another, and naturally, you must start screaming that those inequalities must be corrected by favoring the oppressed, discriminated group over the oppressor group. Enter national quotas for hiring. Now just replace national with race or women. Once the groups are formed and well-defined, it's needless to say that all the mainstream media in Yugoslavia were government-controlled and were fueling the narrative about mutual Discrimination and hatred relentlessly. The growing fear and feeling of insecurity destroyed relationships, marriages, friendships. As fear of discrimination and hostility among groups were growing, people started retreating and isolating within their own groups because they didn't feel safe anymore with the individuals of the other group. All of a sudden, staged and very well organized mass protests started all over the country protest against the oppression and killing of one group by another. At first, those protests were peaceful, but soon enough, rioting and burning started. Now that you have the attention of the public, you need sparks. What is a spark? A spark is a convenient event of murdering of a random member of one group by a hateful member of another, and you usually need more than one of those. At this point, people were still not completely divided. There were still reasonable people left, those who understood we are all one nation under God, and that we will not kill each other under any circumstances. They went out protesting together, singing for peace and holding their hands. But the hunger for the absolute power of socialists was stronger than our love for each other. And shootings and attacks at protesters continued. In the next phase, the tipping point with no return was reached. People started erecting barricades at the entrance of their cities, their neighborhoods, even on highways and roads. Wow. Barricades were guarded with armed civilians. Each and every attempt of the law enforcement to remove barricades and to de-escalate the situation was in vain, since they would be ambushed and killed. Wow. Peace couldn't be restored anymore, because headlines, photos and videos of dead people propagated through mass media became too explicit and horrifying. Wow, so, man, they can yet, especially when you have the state-run media or controlled by the elites or something, man, they can project anything to get you, to so they can divide you, so, it's about division, and man, oh man, you heard what this lady was saying, oh man, this is just, yeah, it's hard to say, man, because the media can just use that to get you, to hate you on another group, and one thing, people, you can't f 
fall into that trap. Don't be false, so let's just continue. Even those hardcore idealists who believed in one nation under God, peace and love, snapped under the pressure. At that point, army was deployed to restore order. But they couldn't do much, because they were clueless about who was the perpetrator and who was the victim. Simply because there, there were perpetrators and victims on both sides. In the final stages, even the army was attacked during the negotiated retreat and 50 or 100 soldiers were killed. And just like that, Yugoslavia found itself in a civil war. City against city, village against village, family against family, wow. and so on until the whole territories became oh, of boy. the members of the enemy group. Oh boy. Genocide, ethnic cleansing, relocation of hundreds of thousands of people were everyday news. It lasted four years. 100,000 people died. Wow. Some yeah. 500,000 were displaced. Oh. Those people lost everything. Yugoslavia was drowned in the bloods of thousands of innocent people and destroyed forever. Wow. You might wonder how we let that happen. How could we let things get so much out of control? That was because we didn't realize who were the real enemies. Yeah, because we don't realize who was the real enemies. And people... If we don't want anything like this to happen in, in to any other Western countries like the America or New Zealand, Australia, we got to know who the real enemy is. Otherwise, it's going to turn out in a civil war like this. And, and of course, our Prime Minister Jacinda Ardern, she really wants division. She wants us to be divided. She is counting on our ignorance. Uh, yeah, because cause what this lady was talking about, because this is going to be the exact thing that's going to happen in New Zealand. And this is why I'm watching that. And it's a lot to take in. It really is. It really is. And, and we've got to remember this, people. We've got to and remember this, people. And... Cause the, cause the elites are trying to use divide and conquer like George Soros cause they're, they're funding the Black Lives Matter movement and to find out cause it's all about Antifa fighting America it's not about Black Lives never is never will be they're not living up to their name they're, they're Antifa and they are violent thugs they hate America they hate Western society they want to bring it down. And well, let's just continue on. The enemies of the Yugoslav people as a whole. Instead, we were brainwashed into buying the story that we, the people, are the enemies of each other. While our true enemies were advancing with their sick, demented agenda, which had as the ultimate goal the total and unlimited power. Yeah. And this is what the media here in New Zealand is going to be doing as well. They're going to be, yeah, because they're going to try to get us to hate each other. Just because of our different opinions. And boy, we can't, we can't be full people. It's time that we got to stop watching the news. If you got a cable TV, throw it away. Get rid of it. If, it, if you got a television that's got like a cable TV built into it, get rid of it. Because, man, these things, I just, I should get rid of it. Well, let's just continue on. This brings me to present times, the year 2020, and to you, American people. Yeah. Unless you were living under the rock, you might have noticed that something very strange and vicious is happening in your country. But you're not exactly sure what it is and where it came from. Because the last time you checked, you were one nation under God, a country of free, independent individuals with equal yeah. rights under the law and core values of life, liberty and pursuit of happiness. All of a the sudden, there is protesting, rioting, arson, murder, destruction of public and private property, and lots of lots of people screaming how unbelievably racist and unjust America is. 
And before you even manage to prepare your morning coffee and turn the TV on, once United Americans are at each other's throat, and bunch of nice and caring people and on TV happen, are telling you how you should accept the violence and hatred against Americans because you deserve it. If you oh, yeah, people, this will exactly will happen this year soon, and we got the proof of that from Terra Pine and. And of course, our Prime Minister is going along with it, and there's the Black Lives Matter, the thousands against it. They're trying to divide us, and this has nothing to do with Black Lives at all. And you see white people in there as well. You see something. And boy, and that was around like June the 1st, and and well, let's just see what Terra Point's got to say and what the Senate idea is pushing about. So let's just go there. Will there be repercussions for the protesters that were well in excess of the gatherings limit of 100 at yesterday's Black Lives Matters protest? I and mean, you can see why they protested, but they shouldn't have protested, should they? A big group like that joining us. Exactly, they shouldn't be, because it was on level two that time. And now to answer is Prime Minister um, Jacinda Ardern. Prime Minister, good morning. Good morning. Um, that protest, um, it was disrespectful to other New Zealanders, wasn't it, who have completely followed the rules. Businesses have gone to the wall, people have lost their jobs. No, they Yet haven't. They go up Queen Street in front of Parliament untouched. Why? Uh, Duncan, I think you actually um, captured it in your opening comment that everyone can absolutely understand the sentiment, but it was a breach of the rules. Um, and they're there for a reason. You know, I don't want to stop <laughs> peaceful protest as much as I don't want to stop oh, larger boy. funerals and larger weddings and all of the things that people have been giving up over this period of time. But the rules are there for a reason. They're there to keep us safe. You dirty, filthy liar. You knew about this protest two days earlier and you, and you didn't try to stop it. It was advertised on one of your TV channels. Yeah, exactly. And it wasn't stop. It was, see, look at that. Looks like it's thousands of people. And let's go to what's the alert system overview it's like it was a little too that time it says you must keep physical uh keep physical distancing of two meters from other people you don't know other than bugger or in retail store keep one meter physical distancing in a control environment like rare places where practical no more than a hundred people at gatherings including weddings birthdays funerals and ten any car <laughs> No more than a uh, maximum of a hundred people at the time in a defined space. People, this is from the rules of that alert system overview of that United against COVID-19. This is from the New Zealand government. And we have a prime minister that's not even enforcing it on the Black Lives Matter movement. And does that look like? That exceed 100 people, from my point of view, yes. Because it looks like, it's like probably thousands. And you heard what Terry O'Pine was saying? She didn't even stop it. She didn't even stop it. For crying out loud. And, and these are the types of people that, in America that, Right, cause violence and chaos and that as well, so. Well, let's just get back to that lady there. That you go starving woman, a nice lovely lady. Let's get back to her. You have paid attention to what happened in Yugoslavia. I hope you have realized by now that your true enemies are not your fellow Americans. The ones who are, they want you to hate each other and to kill each other while they're taking away your constitutional rights, your freedoms, and your country, your heritage, your way of life, and the future of your chil children. Exactly! And they're trying to do that here in New Zealand. They're trying to do that here in New Zealand. So, people... This is really... 
something you should be hearing and paying attention because they're trying to divide each other, trying to hate each other, so... Let's continue. Although it is more than obvious that there are very well organized groups used as tools to install and amplify hate and to create a division between Americans, there are only metastases which have also spread to healthy America. Of course, they are violent terrorist organizations and they must be removed as well. Exactly. But the main cancer that is killing America, the one where all this mayhem is coming from, is somewhere else. The real and extremely dangerous enemies of American people are the elected officials in your government, in your states, in your courts. Yeah, exactly. And we have that government called Jacinda Ardern. And she's pushing the exact same thing. Representatives, governors, mayors, judges. The ones who are pulling the ropes. The ones who hate America and American people so much that would even sacrifice the life and prosperity of their own children just to see it burned to the ground and American blood spilled. Yeah, that's why she's bringing, try, that's why our Prime Minister Jacinda Ardern is trying to bring in that lockdown on the first week of August. As well, because so she can crash the economy, bring down New Zealand, probably before the, even before the election. Those are really sick, demented, ideologically possessed people. And they are in high positions in the government. They are governing your states, your cities, and making decisions in your courts. Exactly. You know very well who they are. You know very well what they already did to once beautiful and prosperous American states and cities. They are resentful, power and bloodthirsty. They exactly. want you and your children suffering in misery and begging them for mercy. They won't stop, no matter how much you try to appease them. Exactly. Unless you, American people, stop them. Exactly. You may be thinking this is not possible. But think again. How many of them tyrants are out there? And how many of you decent American people? What makes them think they can do whatever they want with you? That they can play you for a fool over and over again? Exactly. And that they're yes. invincible? What makes them think they're gods? morally and intellectually superior compared to you, freedom-loving Americans. Yes, you guessed it. The fact that they managed to get away with it every single time. They faced no pushback and not a single consequence for their crimes against American people. The time has come for them to pay for their treason. Exactly. Yes, exactly. And we got our, yes. Because with our Prime Minister Jacinda Ardern, she's been committing a crime against New Zealand people. And she must be removed from office, charged for treason. Charged for treason, she should be facing life in prison. i say, people, let's get this Ardern out of office and get her behind bars. For the crime she's trying to bring on to the New Zealand people. Or probably other, not other, probably other, other countries as well. So, depends what crime she has already committed right now. So, people, it's time that we need to get Billy Dikaki elected and get the National and Labour Party out of office. And let's, let's do this, but before we end this video, I'm going to continue the rest of the, f for another five more minutes, so let's just continue on. How you should act. First thing that you must do, stop caring whether you've been called a racist, a white supremacist, a selfish person who wants to spread the C-1984, or whatever nice name they have for you. This irrational fear of stigma, a phobia of being called a racist, has way more destructive implications than you can even imagine. Stop caring whether you'll offend anyone. Number of people offended by you practicing your First Amendment rights is directly yeah. proportional to how successful you are in that. Which means, the more offended, the merrier. Exactly, we need to have to stop being, stop caring what other people say. And yes, and when we know we do that though, and yes, but like we had to sort of play things quite smart as well and make sure you have people that you know that you can trust 
that they can care for you when you do get kicked out of your place or so but you still have a place that you can go to so let's just continue stop attempting to have a fact or logic based rational conversation stop explaining yourself it's useless you're wasting your precious time and energy they have a playbook and changing their minds is not part of it second exercise your second amendment rights this means study carefully and in detail gun laws in your state next arm yourself if you have never used a gun before make sure to take a basic gun training this is very important because you must know how to use a gun properly to protect yourself your family and your property so that you can avoid hurting yourself or innocent people as a consequence of improper gun use Be exactly we need to learn how to defend ourselves use firearms properly so we don't end up having our, either ourselves or other people guns don't kill people it's people that kills people so bear that in mind and people should have a right to defend ourselves and people are learning how to defend myself on a daily basis although I don't really have a gun at home but I do have some couple of weapons at home and I do trade with them daily on the basis at least I'll do my best to do so so let's continue be a responsible gun owner third and most important exercise your first amendment rights yeah that's what of we're course, doing it is very important to vote in november but i'm afraid it will not be enough yeah and this i have september, seen such a diversity yeah. of ways socialists used to steal yeah we got a boat on september it's time that we get billy the khaki car in office yes we need to exercise our freedom of speech we need to do that although i've been so being attacked by anti-humanists how that humans are disgusting I'm trying to say that no humans are lovely creatures and I know th there's something that has caused problem but we also can be the solution so <laughs> it's time that we humans can be the better solution because there are types of humans humans that cause problems but there's the humans that are the solutions so and we want to be that type of human that can bring solutions. So let's just continue on. Till the elections in Yugoslavia, and I'm absolutely sure your tyrants will give their best to do the same. You must act now. You must go out on the streets, peacefully assemble and protest against tyranny and infringement exactly. of your God-given rights. Millions and millions of you decent American people, you must have your voices heard. You must send a very loud and a very clear message to the elected officials in the federal government and in your states that enough is enough. Yes. And that you want them to take action now against tyranny. Yes. Remind them why you voted for them and why they are elected. Remind them of their sacred duty to protect the vision of founding fathers of the United States of America. Tell them you want your constitutional rights defended and protected. Exactly. Tell them you want your history preserved. Exactly. Tell them you want to be able to freely exercise your rights to free speech. Yes. To be able to freely and openly show the love for your country. To be able to proudly put American flag in front of your house. Yes. House, I got my new show flag your pride of your heritage, your culture, and your nation. Yeah. Tell them you stand proudly with American law enforcement mm -hmm. and that you got their back in yep. the same way you want them to have yours. Yes. Tell them you want to be treated as grown-up individuals who can make exactly. their own decisions. Tell them that there is no place for socialism in America. Never Tell for them New you Zealand. want the traitors of American people out of their offices and out of government. Tell them you want them charged and prosecuted for treason and crimes against humanity. Yeah. Yeah. And that if they are not removed from the government and from their offices, that you, freedom-loving Americans, will unleash all your anger on tyrants and you will remove them yourself yes it is your do. constitutional obligation to protect the legacy yeah. of founding fathers and to fight against any form of yeah. tyrannical government which infringes upon your constitutional rights never forget why you celebrate the independence day oh, don't be afraid you whether you will get attacked for exercising your first amendment rights you certainly will be if yeah. that happens defend yourself yeah. remember Self-defense is not violence, no matter what they tell you and what they accuse you of. Yeah, cause the word violence comes from the letter word means violate. Cause 
Yeah, because do not, when a person violate your rights, they have committed a form of violence. Because the word violence, if it's from the Latin word, means violate. Yeah. President Trump is on your side and on the side of liberty. Because if he weren't, they wouldn't try this hard to sabotage him in every way possible, to make a nightmare out of his life and his presidency, and to remove him from the office. He's in their way of them getting what they want. But he cannot fight this battle alone. He's having a very hard time right now, defending your freedoms. That's why you must show him you stand tall and proud with him, mm -hmm. united in a fight against tyranny, against hate and violence, and against the ultimate evil of socialism. Yeah. You must show your open and unlimited support to his vision of draining the swamp and protecting the law and order and freedoms of American people. You must understand that, besides being a gatekeeper of free America, yeah. President Trump is also a gatekeeper of the free world. This means that if we, free people of the world, lose America, we will lose the world as well. Yeah. You must not make the same mistakes as Yugoslavs made. Exactly! Because the only casualties of our mistakes were ourselves. Yeah. This is different because now, the future of the whole free world is in your hands. Yes, it is. It's in our Having hands, all that people. said, I hope you will go out on 4th of July in tens of millions and celebrate Independence Day with your president as you should, as free Americans. God bless President Trump and God bless America. Yeah, and that's it. Well, people, I hope you enjoyed it. What this one had me really say, it was really an eye opener. And man. This is not only just warning America, but also other Western countries. And of course, people, we must remove Jacinda Ardern out of office. And this election is uh, going to be the most important election. It's time that we need a boat Billy to Kakika in office. It's time that we get Ardern out of office, get her charged for treason, that she, and for the crimes against the New Zealand people. Because she's trying to bring that lockdown into place, she's trying to crash the economy, she's trying to keep us in homes as well, like, so this is what she's trying to do is treason. She's got, she passed the health response bill as well. And she's trying to, and she also had passed the internet censorship bill. Here it is there people, censoring internet, it says that. The internet has been censorship for years, however the government have pleased that believes it's still not doing enough censoring whilst introduced into parliament. Films and publication, case verification, mission, communication on prevention from the online harm amendment bill. Relating to questioning the Christchurch shooting, so you're not even allowed to question it. Because, well, if you dare quite question it, bang! You'll get it arrested or be charged for 200000 dollar fine. Talk about censorship, people, and anything that's stain in any... Think she deems subjectable and do you know what? Anything that's deemed objectable is what she doesn't like. She is pro censorship. She needs to be removed from office. Well, I've been saying a lot, people. Been saying a lot. Yeah, of course. Yeah. She's been, yeah, violated uh, people's rights. She, yeah, because. Because that means she has committed a form of violence. Because the word violence is comes from the Latin word violate. So, people, you think I'm like mistaken? Well, I'm not really mistaken. There are times I may have got things wrong, so which I tend to do as well. I might tend to do again sometime in the future. So, people, I hope you enjoy this podcast. It's like it's probably been about 40 minutes into it though, but I really enjoy showing what i got to really say. So, it's people, 
On September 29th, it's time to vote her out. It's time to get National and Labor out. I mean out and let's get the person Billy the Kakika in office. So we can remove National and Labor and get them charged for their crimes. And let's make New Zealand a great country that we can enjoy and live in. And that's all I gotta say for now. It's Matthew Miller starting off over and let's show this flag here and yet New Zealand because that's to know that I love my country people and I really want to enjoy it because I'm, I'm, I was born into it and that's just, well, I hope you enjoy your stay. See you around.